Su formidable velocidad y la calidad de sus gráficos convirtieron a Sonic the Hedgehog en un icono de los videojuegos. La gran franquicia ha vendido más de 70 millones de juegos por todo el mundo, ofreciendo un gran número de títulos a sus fieles seguidores e introduciendo varios personajes como Miles, Tails, Prower, Knuckles, Dr. Eggman, Amy Rose y muchos más. La franquicia aspira a crecer aún más, ya que este año Sonic vuelve con una última entrega, Sonic Generations. A finales de los 80, Nintendo era líder en ventas de consolas y videojuegos, gracias sobre todo a los juegos de Super Mario y a la plataforma de juego NES. Tuve had conversations with Mr. Nakayama, the, the uh, CEO of the company, about uh, about what needed to be done for Sega to compete in the United States marketplace. Nintendo completely dominated the industry. They had a share of market that was above 90%. Third-party game developers were all beholden to Nintendo. I mean, they, they owed Nintendo their livelihood. So it was very difficult to break into the marketplace back in, in that time period. Sega, a pesar de haber lanzado la Mega Drive, más potente poco tiempo antes, aún necesitaba un juego excepcional que mostrara el potencial del sistema y pudiera restaurar el equilibrio. Decidieron que antes de sacar el juego, tenían que reemplazar la mascota, Alex Kidd, con lo que tenían que crear un nuevo personaje. For some time, the management of Sega was aware that to compete with Nintendo, one of the things that would be necessary was their own strong character to compete with Mario. Sega really wanted to create its uh, Sega's Mickey Mouse, Sega's Mario. The view at that time was you needed a mascot, typically a platformer, that brought to life what the, um, if you will, the irreverence of your brand. So the company started to uh, ask all employees to come up with ideas. Una persona que oyó este llamamiento fue Naoto Oshima. 純粋 Mientras Oshima desarrollaba ideas para posibles personajes, Yushinaka, un joven y avezado programador de SEGA que ya había trabajado en otros juegos, recibió la tarea de no solo programar el juego en el que aparecería este nuevo personaje, sino también de concebir un juego que pudiera demostrar el auténtico poder de Mega Drive. できる方が今じゃないかっていうのがまあその当時のゲームはですねあのバックアップとかがなくてですねセーブができないので毎回ゲームを始めると一番最初から始めるんですね今のゲームだと途中から始めることができるんですけど昔は必ず一番最初からこ
ゲームをちゃんとなんか力を入れて作ろうということで、まあ、その当時の中ではすごい期間も通常よりも長くともらえていいゲームを作れということで作れたというのがスタートになると思います。まあ、やはりソニックでの大きな違いっていうとそのまあ今までそれ,それまではまあマリオとかもそうなんですがこうブロック単位でこうゲームのこうマップが構成されているところをですねこう滑らかなこういうふうな形をまあすごく高速で駆け抜けるっていうところがまあ大きなチャレンジだと思います。でここは滑らかに動けるっていうところがまあある程度目処がついたのでこの滑らかにできるなら回れるんじゃないかということをまあ思ってですね僕自身が。でそこでこういう,こうループみたいなところのプログラムを作り上げてきて、まあ、ですけどこれを作ったはいいんですけどもものすごいこのここ高速で行くとですねループ回らずに突っ込んでいったりとかですねすごくここを綺麗に回すのに苦労した覚えはありますあのソニックというキャラクターの絵をいろんな方に見てもらうとソニックはすごく子供子供のキャラクターでとなんかすごく可愛いキャラクターだというふうに思われたのででも私が思ってたソニックはもっと大人をイメージしてたの Estando el personaje de Sonic the Hedgehog en la última fase de diseño, en la sede nipona de SEGA, creyeron que tenían la mascota y el juego que estaban buscando. El personaje se envió a la sede estadounidense, donde decidieron hacerle algunos cambios para adaptarlo al mercado occidental. I was asked to redesign Sonic from his backstory to his character so that he could actually work in terms of advertising and merchandising the comic book series and on TV. The Sonic team in Japan really hated Sega of America's uh, redesign of uh, uh, Sonic. In the meeting, they absolutely did not come around. I mean, they created a beautiful character, and they didn't feel that we had any right to change that character, which is quite understandable. But、um, we were on a mission, and we were going to make Sonic happen in all the right ways possible. We really believed in the redesign of the character, and he needed to be the face of Sega. Worldwide. After the meeting, however, they really assessed the strength of the game, the strength of the platform, and they determined that the Sega Genesis and Sonic was actually going to be more successful in America and in Europe versus in Japan. And so, because of that, they decided that we needed to make the calls required to make this character successful. Sega of America marketing made it a little Uh, in a way, edgier and、uh, in a way a little more comical, humorous, and、uh, soften it. Con el personaje y el diseño del juego tomando forma para el público norteamericano y el diseño original para el resto del mundo, en Sega creyeron que el impresionante proyecto necesitaba una banda sonora que estuviera a la altura. Para lograr esto, contrataron a Masato Nakamura, compositor y cofundador de la sensación pop japonesa Dreams Come True.、Uh, I didn't treat、uh, Sonic as a、uh, game, but a film. You know, because. A、graphic is great and very, it has a very strong story. So I thought, oh, this is a movie, film. So I wanted to create a movie music or film music. Sin embargo, con el juego aún en etapas tempranas del desarrollo, Nakamura solo podía emplear imágenes estáticas como inspiración. So,、uh, Sonic staff explained to me, you know, it's gonna be like this, it's gonna be like this. And I started, you know,、uh, writing songs, but、uh, I will never know, because that was a totally, totally new for me. So, it was a really tough job for me. So, just because you know, I wanted to treat、uh, Sonic the Hedgehog as a film,、uh, my inspiration comes from each graphic, you know, each stage. s So, if I can see a red color, so my music's gonna be like a you know, volcano stuff, or if I can see an Iceland, you know, I wanted to create a kind of icy music. So, my inspiration com- came from visual or graphic. 
at the same time, uh, the Mega Drive system, the sound system is very limited. Maybe we could use four sound or at the same time. So it's it was really really tricky, you know. But that limitation, you know, uh, inspired me a lot. Las versiones de prueba del juego gustaron en SEGA e hicieron que aumentara la confianza en que Sonic the Hedgehog sería el juego que le daría a Mega Drive el impulso que requería para demostrar que se trataba de una consola de tecnología punta para la época. ま、when I saw a very, very early version of Sonic. Graphics were half done, just part of the first Green Hill Zone. And it looked interesting from a different distance because it was so bright. But once I got up closer to it, they started going and moving Sonic around, having him roll up into a ball and then start moving. And it was like, I had never seen speed like that. <laughs> やろうって言って割と早くしていたりした瞬間があるので、その時の確かに気持ち悪くなったりはしましたね。なので、そういった意味ではこうスタートする瞬間だったりとか、その後の流れてるところとかの調整みたいなのは、その当時やった覚えが
Para crear un rumor sobre la aparición de Sonic, Sega pensó en una estrategia de marketing muy directa pero arriesgada. I believed in being very aggressive in marketing. I believed in taking Nintendo on head on. So one of the challenges that we had when marketing Sonic is we wanted to go directly up against Mario and we wanted to do that in TV. Uh, we created very competitive TV ad comparing Nintendo game and Sega game side by side with price tag attached to it. And we knew that the minute we would televise a commercial against Mario, that Nintendo would require that we pull the TV spot. Tom and the marketing team asked me, uh, do you think uh, this will be uh, acceptable to the Japan management? And uh, I scratched my head and thought about this and uh, uh, decided not to tell the Japan management until only a few days before we air. And in case they said, you can't air this, stop it, um, I was thinking to tell them that I tried to stop it, but I couldn't stop it in time. It was, um, I think, pretty innovative on our part to throw pretty much all of our media dollars against that one night worth of TV. Sonic the Hedgehog, more action, more speed, Sega Genesis, it's a whole lot more for less. Sonic the Hedgehog apareció en junio de 1991 y la reacción fue notable. Nunca antes se había visto un juego similar. ¿Por qué la creación de Sonic tuvo tal efecto en el público? Sonic was appealing for a number of different reasons. First of all, he just has a beautiful simplicity to him. Clean lines, just a gorgeous set of colors, the blue and the red tennis shoes. But secondly, he really communicated the power of the game just by looking at him. When you see those red tennis shoes, you just assume he can run fast, and he did. And his spin attack made it appear as though nothing could defeat Sonic the Hedgehog. And then the attitude at the end was just kind of the perfect topping. で、その時はそのゲームのスピード感とあとやはり音楽が持つキャッチーさ。そこに惹かれました。I across the screen and it was like magic back in those days. He had an edge to him. He wasn't your laid back, soft, uh, nice guy. He had a little bit of edginess to him and a little bit of uh, smart assness to him, if you will. And I think that made him very appealing to uh, kids and, and teens. あの、あの、あれが動いてる姿を見て、もう本当にかっこいい。で、これが本当に家庭用ゲーム機なのかって驚いたぐらい、あの、すごい強い印象を受けました。En Sega creyeron que Sonic iba a ser un éxito. Tom Kalinski pensó que el atractivo de Sonic suponía para la empresa una oportunidad innovadora. The thing we had to do first and foremost was sell a lot of hardware, because otherwise, how are you going to sell a lot of software? If you don't get a lot of hardware out into the homes, you really had no chance of creating a marketplace with uh, follow-on software. Tom and I went to Japan and sat down in the big Sega Japan boardroom with over a table with perhaps 30 board members and other executives and explained our strategy. That is, uh, we lower our price from $189 to $149. When Nintendo was offering the Super Nintendo at $199, and on top of that, we wanted to bundle uh, our software, Sonic One, and create the bundle pack uh, for that $149 price point. And uh, as Tom started to explain, I saw Nakayama-san's face sort of turning white and getting angry, and uh, uh, he stood up and said, uh, uh, we make money from software because we don't make money really from hardware. So uh, why we give away the best software away? 
and he kicked the chair and literally ran to the door. Then I thought, well, that's the end of my career. And he turned at the door and he said, well, I hired you to build the company and take market share from Nintendo. And if this is what you think you have to do, go ahead and do it. So he supported our plan 100% and uh, to, to his credit, I think, uh, to his great credit, because he could have easily said no. And, uh, and because of his uh, allowing us to do that, we then went on to really dramatically take share of market away from Nintendo in the next year. The concept of bundling in our industry, i.e. of putting in software with the hardware to drive accelerated sales rates or to forestall a price drop, um, is a time-honored tradition, if you will. What, what Tom Kalinske did in 1991 here with the Genesis, uh, by putting Sonic in there, a triple A AAA piece of software, kind of broke the mold, if you will, um, from what had previously happened where the um, less desirable software had been packaged in because it was cheaper and more effective to be able to push that through rather than give away what was seen to be high profit margin software. La gente compraba las consolas de Sega solo para jugar a Sonic y viendo el enorme éxito que había cosechado el juego era inevitable que no apareciera una secuela. When we completed Sonic 1, which was originally developed in Japan, we realized that the real battlefield against Nintendo is the United States. Therefore, we brought the team to Palo Alto, uh, California, and added some American resources and started to create Sonic game. And uh, that really made uh, much uh, better, closer collaboration between the Sonic team and the U.S. marketing team. After Sonic 1, we wanted Sonic to continue to grow. We, we managed his career, much like you would manage the career of a famous actor. And so what was important is that, first of all, we grew Sonic's world, and we introduced a new character by the name of Tails, so Sonic had a friend. And then we also continued to flush out his Bibles and flush out his backstory. We were much more involved in Sonic 2, but that said, the Sonic team really did drive the design of Sonic 2 as well. Al Nelson and I were a part of making sure that the new characters that were designed fit within the entire world. But the game was definitely driven, conceived of, and developed by the Sonic team. And they did a beautiful job as well. Una vez listo para salir Sonic the Hedgehog 2, en Sega ingeniaron una maniobra de marketing que convirtió a Sonic en una sensación mediática mundial y volvió a mejorar las ventas de la Mega Drive gracias al día de Sonic 2. Sonic Tuesday was an industry first, and we're proud of it. It was one of the first uh, worldwide launches, if not the first worldwide launch. There was a whole lot of logistics involved in making sure that we had all the millions of Sonics delivered to every single retail outlet and making them hold it until Sonic Tuesday. And I remember talking with the president of some of the air freight companies we were using, and they were pulling their hair out and helping us manage this process of air shipping to every retail store or, and, and truck shipping to every retail store in America to make sure the product all arrived at the same moment so that it could be at retail uh, that next morning. Nunca antes se habían presenciado estas escenas en todo el mundo por un videojuego casero, con gente haciendo cola bajo la lluvia para aprovecharse de las aperturas de medianoche, hecho inusual entonces en la industria del videojuego. El día de Sonic 2 supuso un gran avance para esta industria, un nuevo patrón de marketing y publicidad que otros imitarían. Los dos primeros títulos de Sonic habían sido éxitos increíbles y cada vez tenían más seguidores. Todo el mundo parecía querer a Sonic, Y mientras la popularidad del personaje crecía, Sega seguía produciendo y sacando al mercado más juegos para añadir a la franquicia. Aparecían seguidores de Sonic por todas partes y con ellos una locura competitiva, ya que los fans querían demostrar quién era el mejor entre sus amigos. Everything we did was with this with this one goal in mind to make Sonic a very very strong brand, a preeminent brand in uh, the video game industry and also for kids' products in general. I believe that it was the, the, the first time anybody dared put their lead product in with the hardware. It was the first time there was TV shows developed around a character. It was the first time there were Happy Meal promotions where we sold 50 million Happy Meals with Sonic uh, characters in it. I think it was the first time a character was in the Macy's Day Parade. 
you know, from a video game. So I think there were a lot of firsts that, uh, that we did. And certainly it was the first time anybody made fun of their main competitor in television advertising and kind of ridiculed their, their main competitor in television advertising. Más tarde, en 1998, el paso de Sonic al 3D fue un gran éxito gracias a Sonic Adventure para Sega Dreamcast. Sí, es que con los 20 años de la historia, 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 de la 3D になってで単にそれが 3D になるだけではなくてキャラクターとして初めて声を喋ってキャラクターが一体どんな気持ちでどういう目的で敵と戦うのかというそういうドラマ的な部分が初めてこうゲームの中に加わったのがソニックアドベンチャーでしてえまあ,あの喋らなかったメガドライブのソニックがこう初めてえキャラクターとして。こう皆さんにこう初めてえそのキャラクター性を伝えられた。This no longer really was purely Sonic on a tight rail going up and down across mountains and terrains. There was this magnificent world now that surrounded, because of the power of the hardware, that surrounded Sonic and his friends. やっぱり当時の16ビット機からまあドリームキャストの方の新しいハードでまあ展開する新しいゲームということでそのハードの性能が上がることでまあ表現できること自体もやっぱりすごく大きく飛躍するのでまあそれを見た目デザインの方でどう表現していくかっていうところでまあまあそのキャラクターの見た目の変化によるインパクトっていうのとまあそうですねえっと実際のその表現力がアップした部分で各キャラクターのアクション性をいかに大きくカメラが引いたり寄ったりした時でも見せることができるかっていうところがまあスムーズに行えるように調整しながら制作しました Tras el éxito del paso de Sonic al 3D vinieron más títulos El equipo de desarrollo siempre se planteaba el desafío de mejorar el nivel de cada juego hasta llegar a títulos recientes como Sonic Colors ソニックカラーズで初のディレクターという、えー、大役をいただいて、まあ、どうやって、えー、お客様に喜んでいただけるような、えー、ソニックの新しいゲームを作っていこうかというふうに考えたんですけれども、えー、まあそうはいええー、っとうちのソニックチームはもうソニックを作るあの優秀なスタッフが揃っているので、えーまあ、私よりもソニックに対しては、えー、もうベテランぞろいと。のチームであるというところでソニックを作ること自体はもう基本的に、えー、スタッフのみんなに任せようというふうに私は考えましたそして私自身は、えっと、それを、えー、っとよりハイスピードアクションの特にアクション部分プラットフォームアクション部分にフォーカスしていくように全体をこう誘導していくような立ち回りをしようというふうに意識してまあ作っていこうというふうに、えー、考えてました。La música de Sonic, que ha ido creciendo con contribuciones de músicos que le aportaban su estilo personal a la franquicia, sigue captando cada vez más adeptos. ソニックの長い歴史の中でいろんな楽曲がありましたでその中で好きな曲とか自信のある曲を一曲あげろって言われてもなかなかこれは難しい話でそうですねトータルで言ったらもう100曲以上は多分作ってはいると思うんですけれどもまあその中で好きなもの強いてあげれるならば「ソニックアドベンチャー2」のテーマ曲の「リブアンドラーン」とあとはそのタイトルの中のステージ曲の一つだった「エスケープ・フロム・ザ・シティ」という曲ですね。で他の方、まあ、例えば
オリジナルのソニックの楽曲を担当されていた中村さんの曲で言えば、えー、僕はソニック2の「エメラルドヒル」というステージの曲が好きです。Of course, you know, the, the project of Sonic 2 is based on the Sonic 1's experience, of course. But, you know,、uh, te- technically, it was improved, you know, including sound itself. Audience expected more, you know what I mean? Because, you know, Sonic 1 has got a、uh, you know, uh, huge success. So, I don't want to make you know, people disappointed. You know, Sonic 2. So it was huge pressure for me. Sonic series の中でこれまで自分が担当した曲で、まあ、思,い出思い入れがあるというか、まあ、一番力を入れて注いできて力を入れてまあ作ってきたのがまあ各タイトルごとのテーマ曲だったりします。でやっぱりどの作品でも一番そのテーマとなるものが一番その作品の核となるものを表しているのでソニックのタイトルの、えー、楽曲を制作して今までで一番、えー、楽しかったなと思う、えー、思い出はですね、えー、ソニックアドベンチャーの楽曲制作になりますあそこで、えー、録音の楽しさっていうのを知,ったし、えー、知りましたし、えー世界中のプレイヤーのこのなんて言うんでしょう、えー、クオリティの高さというのをもうまざまざと、えー、肌に感じた初めてのタイトルでしたので、えー、今ある、えー、僕のこう生活スタイルっていうのもあのタイトルでなんか確立されたんじゃないかなと思っていますそれぐらい僕の中では大きいタイトルになっています。Para celebrar su vigésimo aniversario, Sonic está listo para volver en Sonic Generations, un juego que abarca las épocas clave de los memorables 20 años de historia de Sonic. Sonic Generations es un juego que se llama Sonic Generations. 2D のクラシックのステージが今回は今の PS3 や360といった次世代機のハードを使って 3D となってしかもすごく密度の濃い世界観となって新たにそのステージを再現するというところが一つのこのゲームのコンセプトとしてありましてまあクラシックのステージはより密度の高い 3D のステージに逆に今度スリ元が 3D だったステージまああのソニック・アドベンチャー2のシティ・エスケープですとかそういう元が 3D だったステージを今度はクラシックで遊ぶと 2D のプラットフォームアクションとして遊べるというその最近の 2D のアクションと 3D のアクションの両方楽しめるというところがソニックジェネーセンの一つの特徴ですねこのゲーム始めるときに私がチームに行ったことが20周年だからってあのさあ20周年集めましたよっていうようなタイトルにするのではなくて20周年だからこそ5年後の記憶に残るそういったゲームを作ろうと。なので新しいチャレンジっていうのは今までのゲーム組み立てもちろんあるんですけどもそこに新しいギミックであったりとか今までなかった演出を追加してで、えー、今まで買ってもらったお客さんはもちろんで今までソニックをプレイしてなかったお客さんもあやっぱソニックって面白いんだって納得してもらえてそれで新しいその5年後につながるようなそういうゲームを作りたいなと思っていますそういうような、えー、今までの20周年の集まりっていうわけではなくてそれを超えた新しいチャレンジっていうのをこのゲームには詰め込んでいます。It's incredible to think now that we're in our 20th year of enjoying Sonic、uh, the Hedgehog games.、Um, there are very few characters or pieces of intellectual property, quite frankly, that can survive five or six years after sequels, never mind two decades. And it, I think it's a test to the timelessness, to the brilliance of the gameplay, to the richness of the world, 
that is Sonic the Hedgehog and all of his friends, and the fact that he has seamlessly transitioned from platform to platform to platform, and never lost that edge, never lost the uniqueness of the gameplay, never lost that cheeky irreverent feeling that we all get when we play Sonic, and I think uh, it's very rare that you can look in our industry today for a character that's withstood the test of time, as has Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you.